Recent surveys show that many high school and university in New York are not familiar with the basics of the U.S. Constitution. What steps can be taken to improve the teaching of the Constitution and U.S. history in our schools? What are you willing to do to address this issue? Uh, that's a very new issue to me. I didn't know this issue exists, honestly. So I don't have an answer just yet to what to do with that. And uh, I, I believe uh, that in any country, I mean, if you, if, you, if you ask the school students what they know about the Constitution, I don't think they they know anything about the Constitution. So it kind of not it's it's not su surprise it's not surprising me. Um, but it's an interesting issue, and uh, I think uh, we should uh, deliver this information to um, you know to school students. Uh, we should think of how to make this information more exciting, more interesting. And um, talking about the history, um, it's 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 interesting. Uh, you know, the, it's interesting the angle of the um, of the topic that 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 we're teaching our kids. For example, you you, you might heard about it that one of the one of the schools uh, showed kid, kids a map of the world without Israel on it. And it was like a part of a geography or history lesson. This is something absolutely unacceptable. Uh, but again, we all know that uh, countries like Qatar donate a lot of money to uh, American schools and uh, universities. We should, you know, we shouldn't. Uh, uh, exchange this money for false history or false knowledge or fake you know map a uh, world map that's i think that's absolutely unacceptable we are I, I think we can uh budget our schools ourselves without the help of other countries because they always demand something in return i don't think this is this is a good idea how do you assess the current state of the election oversight system in New York? Does it require reform? Um, I think it would be great to have more transparency uh, to oversee the election process, uh, definitely. So it's a lack of transparency. Uh, there's so many, you know, details that we don't know about we have no idea uh, how the system works from the inside so um, I, I would like it to be like you know like covered with glass so we can see the mechanism inside the engine inside and see all the problems and the issues uh, but overall I mean comparing to many many other countries say Russia where I came from I think it's not the worst system in the world but any system needs some maintenance some oil so it could continue um, so the mechanism is continue working so I think the answer is more transparency in light of the discussions about extending voting to multiple days what is your position on returning to single day voting how do you plan to protect voters' rights in this context? Well, the, the, the problem is, with one-day uh, one voting, the problem is that uh, there's so many people cannot vote because they're not in town, they got sick, and many, many, they, they're busy at work, there are many, many other reasons. So there are a lot of benefits of early voting. Uh, however, as, as you mentioned, there are you know there are issues as well and we, we shouldn't put it this way that we cannot control it we should control it so early voting is good but we should um, find a way to control early voting if we can control one day why can't we control seven days 
How are you preparing for the upcoming elections? What steps are you taking to mobilize voters and engage with the residents of your district? You know, I'll, I'll tell you honestly, um, I'm engaging with the voters in the district regardless of the, uh, every single day. I know their needs, I know their problems. I'm receiving numerous complaints, my office is receiving numerous complaints every single day. Uh, sometimes we even work weekends. Uh, so, and I'm not doing it because, you know, to win the election. I'm doing it because I really want to help the, uh, the district. I want to help um, people who need my help. And I think this is kind of something that automatically wins you the election. So don't think about winning the election. Think about doing your job honestly. Uh, and you, you will win the election anyway, just because, you know, people see what you do. So don't be a fake politician and you will win the election. As easy as that. What is being done to address the rising cost of housing in New York City? Are there any new initiatives to create more affordable housing or protect tenants from skyrocketing rents? So, uh, nothing much was done, unfortunately. Again, because we are... Uh, don't forget that uh, we have a supermajority, Democratic supermajority in New York State Assembly. So any good ideas that we propose uh, are being blocked by the Democratic supermajority. We, I mean, you know, Republicans and conservatives. I believe there are too many obstacles. For example, I, I can give you a real example. For example, uh, a friend of mine, he is a, uh, he has a construction company, and he bought two pieces of land, two lots, where he wanted to, to, to build a building. And there was a Con Edison electric pole uh, between the lands. So he needs to remove the pole to a different location nearby. So imagine how many months do you need to remove one electric pole and start building the building which is so needed in, in the area, in the district. Guess what? Two years two years to remove one electric pole. So how can we build? Look at Florida, look at Texas. I mean, Florida is building towns while we are building buildings. And this is the biggest problem, the obstacle that the city and state creates for uh, private companies to build something. Once we will get rid of these obstacles, of this bureaucracy, we will build more, much more, much more housing, including affordable housing. So this will be my answer.